Okay. Hello, my dear students. It's time for our second lesson, for our second online lesson. And today we are going to speak about geographical position of Ukraine. And we'll revise something about present perfect passive. We'll revise how to use it, how to form sentences using this tense. So, let's start. Let's go on. And as I told you, today we'll speak about geographical position of Ukraine. I'm sure you have studied this material during your geography lessons. Uh, and I would like to ask you, what do you know about the main geographical features of Ukraine? And what can we name the main geographical features? What is always interesting for us when, when we speak about some country? Uh, I think mm, some questions should be basic for speaking about any country. So the first question is, where is the country situated? Next, what other countries does it border on? What is the territory of the country? Just to understand, is it big or small? What is the population of the country? What is the surface of the country? Is it flat or mountainous? Or maybe it has some other kind of surface? What is the highest mountain, longest river? And are there some special features of this country? What is the climate of the country? Uh, just to know what kind of cloth is to take with you if you're going there. And what are the main towns and cities? Just to know where to go, what to see, what to do, and so on. I'm joking. So let's start speaking about our country, about Ukraine. But before working on our text, and we'll work on the text from our textbook, that's why you should have it now. Take your textbooks, your students' books, open them on page 220. We'll work on exercise number two. Mm -hmm. It starts on page 220 and finishes on page 221. And for successful work, we need to revise some words. I'm sure you know most of them, but just in case you have forgotten, let's revise. So the first word is majority. Majority means більшість. Diverse. What is diverse? Diverse means різноманітний, різноплановий, and something like that. Features. Features. Features of character, features of the country, risi. Highland. Highland, верховини, території, які знаходяться вище чогось. Lowland, навпаки, низини. To body on. Body on, we can translate as межувати. Межувати з чимось, кимось. Cover. Cover, покривати, займати територію. You know this word cover as a phone cover, for example. Чохол. And book cover, обкладинка. So this word has a lot of meanings. Temperately, temperately, помірно. Humid, humid air, вологе повітря. Average, average means середній. Observe. Спостерігати, відмічати. Coastline. Узбережжя. And similar. Схожий. So, later, please listen to this uh, record again and write down these words into your vocabulary or your copybook. With translation, of course. Next. So, as I told you, uh, we'll start our work with exercise number two on page 220. So, the task is read the text about Ukraine's geography and say whether the sentences are true or false. Correct the false sentences. Uh, we'll just uh, decide if the sentences are true or false and that's all. Well, so it's time to read the text. Are you ready? So, listen to me, please. And later, please read this text by yourselves. The geography of Ukraine varies greatly from one region of the country to another, but the majority of the country lies within the East European plain. Ukraine is the second largest country by area in Europe after the Russian Federation. 
Its various regions have diverse geographic and climatic features, ranging from the highlands to the lowlands. Ukraine has a strategic position in East-Central Europe. Laying on the northern shores of the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov, it borders a number of European countries – Poland, Slovakia and Hungary in the west, Belarus in the north, Moldova and Romania in the southwest, and Russia in the east. The total geographic area of Ukraine is 603,550 square kilometers. The most part of its area is flat. The mountains in Ukraine cover only 5% its territory. These are the Crimean mountains in the south and the Carpathians in the west. Hoverla is the highest peak of the Ukrainian Carpathians. It is 2,061 meters high. There are seven major rivers in Ukraine. Desna, Dnipro, Dniester, Danube, Pripyat, Severin Donets, and Southern Bug. The climate of Ukraine is determined by its geographical location. Ukraine's territory lies in the temperate belt and its climate is temperately continental with cold winters and warm summers. Only the southern coast of the Crimea is subtropical. Ukraine's climates are influenced by the humid air from the Atlantic Ocean. The average yearly temperature in Ukraine varies between plus 5 plus 7 degrees Celsius in the north and plus 11 plus 13 degrees Celsius in the south. January is the coldest month and July is the hottest one. The average temperature in January is 7 degrees below zero. The average temperature in July is 23 degrees above zero. The highest rainfall is observed in the western part of Ukraine, in the Carpathians. This is the wettest place in Ukraine. The rains are few on the coastline of the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov. On the main part of the country, rain falls enough to cultivate different agricultural plants. There are more than 300 cities and towns in Ukraine. The biggest of them are the industrial centers such as Kharkiv, Donetsk, Dnipropetrovsk, Lviv, Odessa, Mykolaiv, Kherson are the most important ports of Ukraine. All parts of Ukraine have got similar climatic and geographic features. Okay, so, and now the task. The task to this exercise was to decide if the sentences are true or false to say whether they are true or false. So, let's look at the map and try to answer. You may use the text to check my answers. Uh, maybe I will try to cheat. So, please correct me if there is anything wrong. So, Poland is located to the east of Ukraine. Uh, as I remember, east is here, west is here. So, Poland is not to the east of Ukraine, it's to the west of Ukraine. So the f first is false. Mountains occupy the major part of the country. If we look into the text, it says that it says that only five percent of the territory of Ukraine is covered with mountains. So it's also false. Most of Ukraine climate is subtropical. Hmm, I wish it were true, but unfortunately we don't live in subtropical climate, so it's false. January, February and December are cold months in Ukraine. December, January, February are winter months, so it's usually cold in winter here, so maybe it's true. The driest area of Ukraine is the south of the country. South, north, south, south is here. So the driest part of the country must be there. Mm -hmm, it's true. Ukraine's territory is washed by two seas. Can you see the Sea of Azov and the Black Sea? 
There are two seas, so it's true. The climate of the country is greatly influenced by humid air from the Black Sea. Uh, I see. Here is the Black Sea. But the text says that Ukraine's climate is influenced by the humid air from the Atlantic Ocean. Mm, I'm not that good at geography, but I believe the text. So, let it be false. Okay, we have finished with that exercise. And now, do you remember those questions that I asked you at the beginning of our lesson? I think you are ready to answer, to answer these questions now. So let's answer these questions about Ukraine. Where is Ukraine situated? Uh, it's situated in the center of Europe, or you may say that Ukraine is situated in Europe. It's a European country, so any answer will be correct. What other countries does it border on? Okay, let's look. I see that Ukraine borders on Moldova, Romania, Hungary, here is Hungary, Slovakia, Poland, Belarus, and Russia. And here is Turkey. So we can say that we have a water border with Turkey. Next. What is the territory of Ukraine? Do you remember what is the territory of Ukraine from the text and from your geography lessons? Mm -hmm. Okay, the territory of Ukraine is is 603,550 square kilometers. What is the population of Ukraine? <clears throat> we don't know exactly, but it seems that the population of Ukraine is about 44 million people. What is the surface of the country? Surface means relief, поверхня. Is it flat or mountainous? Uh, look at this map. I see that mountains are only here and there. So, there are two mountain ranks in Crimea and in Carpathian, Carpathian mountains. And the text says that only 5% of Ukraine's territory is covered with mountains. So, we may say that the territory, the surface of our country is mostly flat. Then, what is the highest mountain? I think everybody knows that. The highest mountain is Hoverla. It's 2,061 meters high. And what is the longest river? The longest river that you can find, uh, you can find in the poems, in different tales. The main river of Ukraine is Dnipro. Its length is 981 kilometers. What is the climate of the country? <clears throat> the climate of the country. Ukraine has a mostly temperate climate. And what about the temperature? The temperature, the average temperature ranges from 5 to 7 degrees Celsius in the north to 11, 13 degrees Celsius in the south. What are the main towns and cities of Ukraine? Okay, if we speak about the biggest towns, the biggest cities of Ukraine, uh, you can be sure that there are some of them, like Lviv, Kyiv, Odessa. But if we speak about main towns, I think it's very personal. Everybody has his or her own main town. For example, if Slavutich is your motherland and you like it so much, uh, maybe Slavutich is the main town for you. I like Chernihiv, I like Kyiv, and in this picture you can see I like Lviv as well, Odessa, Uzhurt, and many other towns and cities in Ukraine. So in this picture you can see different places which can be found here. So, now it's time to revise our grammar. To remember this table from the previous lesson, present perfect passive, the main formulas, okay. Uh, we have already practiced some of these uh, tasks. We have already practiced changing from active voice into passive voice. So let's go on with this kind of work. Uh, 
we have revised some facts about Ukraine. Up to now, we have revised some facts. It's present perfect active. We have done that. If I want to change it to the passive, the new subject will be some facts about Ukraine. Some facts, plural, so I should use have. Some facts about Ukraine have been revised by and what to use here? If the previous subject was we, what will be a new object? We should revise the changes of pronounces. So, pronouns must be changed, personal pronouns in passive constructions um, have some changes. So, from, acti uh, from active into passive voice. If we used we in the original sentence, we'll have to use us in the passive construction. So, some facts about Ukraine have been revised by us. Okay. Let's look at these three sentences. I have already read that book about Ukraine. The new subject. That book. That book, it's singular, it's a uh, third person. That book about Ukraine has already been read by, we change I to me, by me. That book about Ukraine has already been read about uh, read by me. We haven't seen any sites in this town yet. The new subject will be any sites in this town. Any sites they so will use have. But we should not forget about that possible possible not. So, any sites have not been seen in this town by us yet. Any sites haven't been seen. And the question, have you ever visited Lviv? Have you ever visited Lviv? The new subject will be Lviv. And we change the order of the verbs. For question, we put auxiliary verb have or has to the first place, then subject, then been and the third form of the verb. Has Lviv ever been visited by? We don't change you. You remains unchanged. And we have, have you ever visited Lviv? Has Lviv ever been visited by you? Okay, I hope you got it because your home assignment will be to read exercise 2. This exercise starts on page 220 and finishes on page 221. Then, to write answers to exercise number 6, which can be found on page 222, answer the questions below, write them, use the model to help you. As you can see, all these questions are about Ukraine and you can find the answers in the text in the exercise number 2 on page 220. And one grammar exercise, exercise 5 on page 222. This is this exercise. You have to change following sentences from active voice into passive voice. For example, has she phoned him? It's a question. Has he been phoned by her? So, I will upload all the tables, all the formulas to my blog. Uh, you will be able to use them while doing your exercises. And I hope you will not have any problems. Write these exercises into your copybooks. And I will check them a bit later. Okay? So, that's all for today. Stay home and study online. Bye-bye, see you, see you next time.